Hi, real quick before we start, I want to announce that I have a merch store. There are t-shirts in women's, youth, and unisex sizes. Express yourself and tell the world that you draw what you want. <laughs> there are also large art prints, notebooks, and a mug. For a limited time, you can use the code MANGA10 to get 10% off your order. There's a link to my store in the description and pinned comment. Okay, enough self-promo. Let's get to the video. <laughs> Hello everyone! In this week's video, I'm going to try TikTok hacks and art trends. Many of you have been requesting I do this for a pretty long time now, but I haven't done it until now because I didn't have TikTok. Uh, but now I do have TikTok. You can follow me, I love to draw manga official. So now that I have TikTok, I thought I would look around it and search for some trends and hacks that I could do. Also, I'll be doing a mixture of digital ones and traditional ones. I saw this multiple times when I was looking through some art TikToks. And you use the liquify tool in Ibis Paint X to animate your art. Most of the people I saw doing this was making characters blink, so that's what I'm gonna do. So I have this picture of Zhongli that I drew. I make a copy and erase out the inner part of the eye. I do this so I can move the lids of the eyes without moving the iris and stuff with the liquify tool. So basically you can move things around with the liquify tool and then if you slide the strength down to zero, it'll go back to normal. And then if you slide it back up, it'll move to where you moved it. So it kind of looks like it's animated. One issue I was having and I tried several times is that I couldn't get the lower and upper lid to meet. They would get stuck like this with a tiny seam in between the two. Uh, so to get past this issue, I decided I would only move the upper lid. I erased everything that I wasn't going to move, including the corners of the eyes because they kept behaving weirdly with the liquify tool. So I basically only kept the upper eyelash area. And once I did this, I was able to pretty easily smudge down the upper lid. Uh, one thing about this is that the art gets a little bit wonky and wavy and kind of pixely. So I am going to make him blink, but I also made his hair, earring, and the tree branches move around a bit. To kind of make it look like there's wind. And here's what it looks like. It's a bit wonky, and I'm not sure why the eyelashes get wide and then thin. Uh, but it's kind of a neat way to make your art look like it's animated. So this next one is turning inexpensive water-based markers into watercolor paint. I was a little skeptical if they would behave nicely or act like normal watercolor paints, so I wanted to try it for myself. I saw many people using Crayola, uh, but I couldn't really find any of my Crayola markers, uh, so I grabbed my old Rose Art markers. So to use these as watercolors, it is recommended to use a tin and draw on it with the markers. You want to use a tin so that your marker stays on top and it doesn't absorb in any kind of way. And once you have your colors on the tin, you just add a little bit of water and mix the pigment and the water together. And now we can paint. And honestly, this worked really well. The only downside is that you probably can't get super dark colors, but if you want pastel colors, this will work really well for you. The colors blend and go down super smooth. If you don't have watercolors, but you have some markers, you should give this a try. It works surprisingly well. When you are drawing digitally, do you ever accidentally draw your line art on the same layer as your sketch? If so, this can help you. I'm doing this in Clip Studio Paint because the original TikTok did it in Clip Studio Paint. Uh, so as you can see, my sketch and line art are on the same layer. I start by merging this layer with a white background. Now I adjust the brightness and contrast until we can't see the sketch. Now I just go to edit and select convert brightness to opacity. This will get rid of the white. And ta-da! The line art is saved. So yeah, if you ever accidentally draw your line art on your sketch, this is a way you can save it. This next one is one that I've seen a ton and it is droplet art. Basically you make droplets of water and then use your paintbrush to add paint to them. Then you blend the droplets together. I always thought it looked really neat and fun, so I was excited to try this for myself. So first I needed some art that I could color. I decided to draw a girl with her hair blowing in the wind. I kept it super simple and quick because I didn't want to spend a lot of time on something if I was possibly going to be ruining it. <laughs> uh, so this is just for testing. 
Also, in case you're curious, I'm using Canson watercolor paper. It's not my favorite paper, but it is nice paper to use when you're on a budget or just playing around with supplies. My current favorite paper is Etcher Hot Pressed Watercolor Paper, uh, but it's kind of expensive, so I only use it for finished pieces. So now that my sketch is in place, let's add the droplets. I'm using this medicine dropper that's apparently from Walmart. <laughs> we have a ton of these in our medicine cabinet. Uh, so yeah, I just add a bunch of water droplets to the hair. Once I added all the water, I add color to each droplet. I try to make a gradient of color from blue to red. Once again, it's kind of sunset colors. I guess I was in the sunset mood while recording this video. <laughs> also, here's some close-up shots of the droplets. It's so neat seeing the paint and water mix. I love it. It just looks so cool. I've seen some people mix glitter with their water and it looks so pretty. So now I take each droplet and paint them together. This part was pretty simple, but I did try to think of how I was mixing the droplets. Like when I reached the top of the head, instead of going back down the other side, I worked my way up because I thought the colors would mix better if I did that. I felt like the purple would kind of overpower the lower colors, so I mixed the lower colors into the upper colors. One thing that was a bit of a problem is that there was a lot of water on the paper. I guess I made too many drops and now there's a lot of water moving around. I had to take a towel and soak some of it up and I was kind of trying to move the paper around uh, to disperse the water. Uh, overall, the gradient seemed pretty nice, so I was looking forward to seeing it dry. However, once it dried, my paint had a bunch of little circle shapes in it wherever a droplet was. It seems like when the droplets sit on the paper, it makes the paper different in that spot. So the paint dries differently where the drops are. Uh, so yeah, I don't know how well this works as a painting technique, but it is kind of fun and satisfying to watch and do. <laughs> uh, so if you just want to have fun, I do recommend giving it a try. Okay, so a lot of people may know this one, but I did not and I thought it was cool. So in Ibis Paint X, you can draw anything and super easily turn it into a pattern. I decided to draw a little Kirby because my little brother Jack kept saying Kirby over and over because he was playing Kirby Epic Yarn. It's his favorite game to play recently. Anyways, to make this be a pattern, all I have to do is tap the transform tool, turn on repeat, and do the zoom out hand gesture. Then we get a pattern. This is so cool. I'm going to use this to make patterns for my webcomic to use in backgrounds or for the clothes. Does anyone know of a way to do something like this in Clip Studio Paint? If you do, let me know because this is really cool. So once again, we are going to look at how we can use markers as watercolors, but this time it's an easy way to get a colorful wash of colors. So get a sandwich bag or some kind of material like it and now draw all over with your markers. I decided to use sunset colors like orange, magenta, purple, and blue. Then I need a spray bottle. My sister let me borrow hers. And I spray the bag to wet the marker ink. Then I just flip the bag over onto my paper. And to mix the paint further, I used my fingers to move the paint around. So I may have messed up a little. I might have sprayed too much water onto the bag because when I lifted it, it left kind of a pool of water at the top. I kind of tried to blend it out, but decided to just let it do its own thing and see what happens. And uh, here's how it turned out once it was dried. I think it looks really fun and colorful and it kind of has a tie-dye look to it. Uh, so yeah, markers work really well as watercolors. <laughs> so I thought this one was super cute and it's a way to make your digital art look holographic, kind of like a holographic sticker. And it's actually pretty easy to do. So you need some art. I have this art of my OC Samson and Finley in chibi form. Uh, this is kind of for a secret project I'm working on. <laughs> uh, anyways, to make it look shiny, I first need to apply a pattern to the art. I decided to use the star pattern. Now I make a new layer and clip it to the stars. On this layer, I apply a rainbow gradient. Then I merge the layers, set the layer mode to overlay, and lower the opacity to 50%. I didn't like the pattern being super strong on the face, so I decided to erase the stars a little with a soft eraser so it was kind of lighter in this area. So next I need an adjustment layer that changes the hue. 
I clip this to the rainbow stars so it'll only change the hue of the stars and not my art. Now I just adjust the hue by 10, save this version and repeat. I keep adjusting the hue by 10 and saving a new version. This will make it so we kind of have frames of an animation of the stars changing colors. I hope that makes sense. Now I did run into a little issue while doing this. The TikTok said to change the hue and save it like 10 to 12 times. Uh, but you see, if I do that, the hue doesn't do a full cycle of shifting colors. And the colors only kind of shift halfway. And I wanted them to go through all the colors. So to make it do a full shift in hue, I had to start from one side of the hue shifter and adjust the hue by 10 until I reached the other side. I had to save like 37 versions. <laughs> So it was a little tedious, um, but after saving all the pictures, I bring them into Premiere Pro, but you can use any video editing software, or if your program has an animation feature, you could also use that. Anyways, I make all the pictures last for a super short amount of time, so that way it changes between the different versions super quickly, and we get an animation of the stars changing colors. And now my art looks like it's holographic. It looks so shiny. I will definitely be doing this in the future. It gives such a fun effect to the art. Shout out to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for anyone who loves learning, wants to explore their creativity, and learn new skills. Invest in yourself and your personal growth by learning new skills on Skillshare. I love Skillshare because it has so many helpful classes. Like one time I was trying to learn how to format my book for self-publishing and I had no idea how to go about formatting it. But because of the classes on Skillshare, I was able to format my book and self-publish it. Book Design Basics, styling novel interiors with InDesign by Neil Swab walks you through the process of designing the interior of a standard novel. From practical page navigation to executing conceptual elements like mood, tone, and style. Also, Skillshare is ad-free so you can stay in the zone while you're exploring new skills. It has new premium classes launched each week so there's always something new to discover. And their entire catalog is now available with subtitles in Spanish, French, Portuguese, and German. The first 1,000 people to use the link in the description will get a one-month free trial of Skillshare. So go join Skillshare today and thank you so much again to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. So I thought this hack was pure genius, but I was also a bit skeptical. The hack is to use the video game Animal Crossing to make 3D backgrounds that you can draw over to use in your art. So I am in Animal Crossing. My house is still decorated for Christmas because I haven't really played since Christmas. My island has been neglected. Uh, but anyways, in Animal Crossing, you can use the camera app to take pictures. Like here is me taking a picture in my attic room. So I took some pictures of my house. I liked this one the most and I brought it into my drawing software. Lowered the opacity and started drawing over it. Also I get screenshots and videos off my Switch by sharing them privately to my social media and then downloading them on my computer. I think you can also take the SD card out of your Switch and access them that way but I'm not 100% sure. So the reason why I was a bit skeptical of this hack is the proportions. The characters in Animal Crossing are quite small and not human size. So I was worried the proportions would look off when drawing in normal sized people. However, it actually works. I quickly drew in some normalish proportion people and I feel like they fit in pretty well. I'm amazed. So yeah, if you don't have any kind of 3D software or ways to make 3D rooms for like comics or webtoons, this is a way you could plan out your rooms. I've seen this like everywhere and it's painting on CDs. I kept thinking this looked like a lot of fun so I wanted to give it a try too. So I have this blank CD. We have a whole stack of these that we don't really use in like a cabinet in our hallway. <laughs> so the first thing I'm going to do is remove the shiny coat on the CD. To do this, I take my X-Acto knife and cut into the CD. I recommend being careful when you do this. I cut a bit too deep and actually cut into the CD instead of just the top layer. Uh, so yeah. Then I take some tape and basically wax the shiny stuff off the CD. <laughs> this part was actually super fun for some reason. I loved seeing the shiny stuff on the tape 
and it was kind of satisfying for some reason. So yeah, I really enjoyed this part. And now we have a clear CD. So I wasn't sure what I wanted to paint on the CD, but I found this TikTok on an easy way to draw water. I thought it was really cool, so I wanted to try it. So I traced my CD onto a piece of paper and drew a bunch of blobs inside that CD shape. The size and shapes of the blobs don't really matter. I just drew a bunch of blobs. Then I placed the CD over my sketch of blobs and filled the blob areas with paint. I'm using a blue Arteza oil-based paint marker for this, but any paint will do. Uh, so as I was filling in the blobs, I thought to myself, I wonder if I could make this look a little 3D by painting on different sides of the CD. Uh, so I thought I would try painting on both the back and the front. So if I were to follow the water tutorial normally, I would fill in the area between the blobs with a darker blue. But to make things easier for myself, I just painted all over the back of the CD because we can still see the pattern on the other side. Once the blue paint dried, I flipped the disc over. Now I'm going to add white lines with a white paint pen. To make the water pattern, I roughly traced the shapes of the blobs I drew earlier. My water pattern turned out okay, but I think I need some practice. The one on TikTok was prettier. Plus my colors are kind of off. My blobs should have been a lighter color, but I chose the lightest blue paint marker I had, but it wasn't quite light enough, so maybe I should have used some normal paint. I feel like I could have done some things to make it prettier. <laughs> to make the lines look more cohesive and connected, you connect to the areas where the blobs get close together, and in any kind of empty areas, you add little circle blobs. This is a super easy way to draw water, and I definitely wouldn't have gone about drawing water like this, uh, but I'll keep it in mind to use for the future. I think it'll be really helpful. And here is my painted CD. I feel like it turned out okay, and it looks kind of neat. But something I discovered is that it looks extra cool if you hold it up to the light. And I wish my camera could capture how cool it looks in real life. The light shines through the blue paint and gives it this really cool blue glow. Uh, so I put the CD in the window next to my workstation and it looks really cool. I wasn't super happy with how it turned out at first, but I quite like it now. Something I saw a lot of people doing was making their sketchbook sketches look like they're glowing. It's kind of hard to explain, so I'll just show you. So I went over to my sketchbook and took a picture of one of my sketches with my iPad. I then opened the picture I took in Ibis Paint X, but you can do this in any drawing app or software as long as it has layer modes. I start by making the picture overall darker by adjusting the brightness and contrast. I do this because it will give more contrast between the picture and the glowing bits. Then I make a new layer and set it to overlay. I take a brush and start painting in some purple. The color doesn't really matter, I just thought purple would be pretty. <laughs> you can use whatever color you want. I decide to add purple to the eyes, the flowers in her hair, and the tips of her hair. Basically any areas that I want to draw attention to. Then I duplicate the layer, but I don't select my duplicated layer. I select this one again. Then I go into the special area and make the brightness all the way up of this layer. I actually had to adjust the brightness multiple times by going in and out of the special area. I kept making it brighter and brighter until it looked kind of glowy. I wanted the glow to kind of fade out, so I used a soft brush to make the edges softer. And for a little extra pop, I added some white highlights to the eyes so they look shiny. So here's before and here's after. I think this is a really fun and easy way to make simple sketches more interesting. I highly recommend giving it a try. So those are all the TikTok trends and hacks for this video. I had a lot of fun making this video. It was nice to experiment with art and try new things and it was really refreshing. If you have any trends or hacks you'd like to see me do, let me know. Maybe I'll do them over on my TikTok. Before we end, I want to thank my super amazing patrons for supporting my work and what I do. It means so much to me. And thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you all next week in my next video. Bye!